After your screen has been exposed, washed out, and dried, what we'll do is touch up and taping before we send it up to the production area. This is where the red coat blockout comes into play. Now what red coat blockout does is it blocks out open pinholes in the screen mesh without having to use tape. Red coat's a lot stronger than tape and it's a lot cheaper than tape. So using red coat to block out your screen is optimal. One thing you want is a light table or some kind of lit area to see through your mesh. If you see through your mesh, then you can see the areas of your pinholes where you need to touch up. I see quite a few pinholes down here. Not so much, maybe one or two up here, one right there. So what we'll do is apply the red coat on the outside of the frame to block out these pinholes. Now we could also use tape during the printing process, but remember red coat lasts a lot longer. When you're blocking out, you want to make sure not to block out your registration marks. That's something you don't want to do. To apply the red coat block out, you'll want some type of spreading tool, either like an ink knife, ink card, or a small squeegee. What we'll do is we'll put the red coat block out on the edge of the frame where we want to block it out. Then we're going to block out the edge of the frame and also the pinhole. So we'll put a little bit over the pinholes. And this stuff goes a long way so you don't need to use a lot of it. Then using a card, kind of take that card and slide it over these pinholes. And it doesn't take a lot of red coat to block something out. Just a small little layer like I'm showing right here will block out those pinholes. Now if you need more red coat, simply apply it. If you need red coat to get into a small area, you might have to get some kind of a little paintbrush to be able to get into really small details if you're not able to get in there with your ink card or squeegee. I'll show it using a squeegee right now. You don't want to get too much red coat on the screen because if you get too much it won't dry. So a big glob like this is actually bad. Got a couple more pinholes here. Right there. Definitely go over the screen with a fine tooth comb and make sure all your pinholes are blocked out. All right, looks like most of our pinholes we've gotten. So we'll do the edge of the frame now. Take your squeegee and run along the edge of the frame, take that bead of block out. You can also use expired or old emulsion for block out as well. Now as you're coating the screen, Make sure to get all the block out away off your frame and use the thinnest coat as possible. You, you don't need a lot of big globs on the screen area in order to successfully block out a mesh. You just need that mesh to be covered. Clean it up. We'll just take a wet rag and clean some of the edge off right here. If you block out an image area where you don't want the block out, that's all you need is a wet rag or just rinse it out with a small spray bottle or something. Okay, now that our screen is blocked out, ready to go, what we'll do is we'll let the block out dry and then tape the screen up. Always remember to take your block out container and rinse the top off with water, otherwise it will get gummed up and jammed. During the printing process, if you ever need to speed anything up as far as the emulsion drying or the block out drying, a uh, high powered hair dryer definitely works very well. Now you don't want to use a heat gun because the heat gun is too hot and will melt the mesh, but using a high powered hair dryer to kind of dry this block out. It will also work if you need to dry your screen really fast after you wash out the image area or even for drying emulsion that you have to do a screen really, really quickly, you can even use a hair dryer. Now probably you wouldn't want to use it for that, but for doing something like this, it's very optimal, especially if you want to speed the process up a lot. Nice tool to have in the dark room, that's for sure.
Another great way to dry the block out is putting it out in the sun. What that does is it not only dries the block out, but it also post hardens the emulsion. Let me touch on post hardening fairly quickly. To post harden the emulsion, you basically take your screen, once your image area is washed out and dried, and put it under exposure light again, either on your exposure unit or out in the sun. What that does is it hardens up your emulsion in another 5 to 10 percent. Now it won't cure an underexposed screen and harden that emulsion because that emulsion has already absorbed water. So you do want to make sure your screen is properly exposed. The post hardening of your screen, especially if you're using harsh inks like water-based inks or solvent-based inks, is very important to the longevity of the frame itself. Post hardening can also help during the reclaiming process because it puts a further resistance against the emulsion and makes it stronger to chemicals and your cleaning solutions so that when you go to finally reclaim the screen, all you're doing is reclaiming the emulsion. You're not trying to get all those contaminants out of the emulsion.